Okay, we're here at the U.S. Supreme Court, right behind me, where we just heard arguments in the Janus versus AFSCME case. I think those who care about worker freedom have a lot of reasons to be optimistic after today's argument. Um, I just want to go over a couple things that I observed when I was in there, uh, some things the judges said, and some things that maybe we'll look out for over the next couple months as we wait for the opinion in this case. Um, first of all, with that, I think this case is very important. Uh, the justices all seem to grasp the national implications of the decision that they have to make. And I think we can expect a decision on the last day of the Supreme Court's term, which would be late June. Uh, they usually save the big decisions for those days and then they get out of town. So I think that's probably what we can expect in this case. Um, Mark Janice's attorneys, represented by Bill Messenger uh, from the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation, did a fantastic job. Um, he made the very simple point that collective bargaining in the public sector is inherently political. Uh, Justice Kennedy really seemed to grasp that point. He understood that uh, whenever you negotiate for just about anything in the public sector context, it will affect public policy matters and therefore it implicates uh, First Amendment protected speech. Um, other justices seem to be uh, joining that sentiment. And of course, the same four justices who voted against the workers in Harris versus Quinn and Knox versus SCIU. Well, that one might be a little different, but um, Justices Kagan, Sotomayor, Ginsburg, and Breyer um, posed several different questions. Uh, Justice Kagan was really concerned, you know, what are the implications? Is this going to mean that thousands and thousands of collective bargaining contracts across the country are um, suddenly declared unconstitutional? New states and unions have to return to the bargaining table. Um, Justice Sotomayor um, got pretty contentious at times, um, took special uh, exception to the Solicitor General, um, whose position for the United States actually changed in this case versus the Friedrichs case a couple years ago. This time, they came out in favor of Mark Janus, in favor of workers' First Amendment rights. Very interesting interchanges in the courtroom that I'm excited about. Um, the union attorneys, uh, the state of Illinois presented their arguments, um, and it seemed to me uh, that the arguments they were making were, we think collective bargaining in the public sector is just good policy and it's something that needs to be retained. Um, the real linchpin in this case is what the court decides to do with the Abood versus Detroit Bo Board of Education case from 1977. That's what began this train of compelled unionism in the public sector, um, and that is what the petitioners, Mark Janis, is asking the court to overturn. We'll see what happens. It was very exciting in there. Um, it was a very lively argument, um, and so we have a lot to look forward to in the next couple months. I'm optimistic. The one justice that everyone wanted to hear from, Justice Gorsuch, uh, didn't ask any questions. He was, he was quiet the entire time, so um, we found that, that interesting as well. Um, he will, of course, be the next unknown vote in this decision. So, a uh, lot to look forward to. Glad to be here. Um, stay tuned for more. Check out freedomfoundation.com. Stay tuned for updates on this case and much more as we continue to help workers realize uh, and then exercise their First Amendment rights uh, throughout the country and specifically on the West Coast. Thanks.